So uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Aditya Bandi and I'm really excited to be here today at the UX India conference. Uh, so when I was asked to speak here, I uh, thought really hard on what I should talk about. Uh, it took some time to uh, figure out the obvious, like I'm a designer uh, and an entrepreneur, so why not talk about how design helped me to be an entrepreneur. Uh, so let's uh, begin with what I was doing uh, when I didn't know anything about design or entrepreneurship. So I, most of my childhood I uh, spent, uh, most of my childhood and my schooling happened in a, in a place called Rajamandri. That's a town in Andhra Pradesh, I know how people know that, 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 that town. Um, like any kid I was uh, happy going to the school, having a good time and one day I, I went to a lecture about IIT and I, and I really, you know, liked the way it was projected and I, I decided, you know, I want to I get, ad, get an admit into IIT. I went back, I came back home and told my parents that, hey, I want to do this. And three months later, we moved to Hyderabad for my studies. Hyderabad has a better education than Rajamandri. This was, this happened in 2000 uh, when I was in seventh grade. Uh, once I moved to Hyderabad, uh, you know, I started studying awful lot of maths, physics, chemistry, uh, like a lot. If you're from Hyderabad, you would know the kind of, uh, you know, uh, things students end up doing, like waking up at five o'clock in the morning, going to tuitions, uh, giving a lot of competitive examinations. The whole aim was to get into IIT, right? So that was the, that was what I was doing before I knew anything about design or uh, entrepreneurship. So I was, one thing I was doing is that I was solving tons of problems. Problems like what is the value of root of i plus root of minus i. If you ask me now, again, I was just trying to do that, it's root 2, I guess I'm, I might be wrong. But this, these were the kind of textbook problems that I was solving and I was getting really good at it. I was very hopeful about getting into IIT. Uh, but if you know, IITs have a very uh, meritocratic system of selecting students into and giving them admits. Students. Bottom line is students don't have a lot of freedom in terms of what courses or departments they choose. So the rank I got, I was offered a design uh, admit in IIT Guwahati. IIT Guwahati has a department of design. And that's how I ended up, uh, so design literally happened to me. It was not that I picked design. So how, do, how, do, how does one deal with it? Like, you know, all my life till this point I was studying maths, physics, chemistry, want to be an engineer, suddenly end up in a design degree. Fortunately, it was a very serendipity for me. I fell in love with it, with the design program. And like all design schools, IIT Guwahati had a, a very unique breed of uh, designers. The design students are, uh, they want to be engineers, but they fell in love with design. And they are in an uh, environment where like, there are other departments around them, like uh, computer science, mechanical, and the courses are very interdisciplinary. So it, in this sort of a scenario, in this sort of a, uh, environment, I started solving other sort of problems. Till now I was solving textbook problems, and suddenly I was asked to solve problems concerning users or humans. And that's what I started doing. I started solving problems for someone users. And this change of perspective helped me a lot in the course of becoming an entrepreneur. I fell in love with the design process in analyzing a problem, getting all the information required for it to solve and uh, talking to the user and finally working on the, on the design solution. It was beautiful. And I started to realize that some of the problems I was working on and I was interested in as a business viability. I realized if I could build a business model around this uh, solution for the problem, I might eventually build a business. So I started to balance design and business uh, in all the work that I was doing. And that's how I stumbled upon uh, being an entrepreneur. And uh, so far, uh, the journey has been exciting for me. I graduated in 2011. I started working for um, companies like Cognizant, Microsoft, and Symantec in the first two years of my uh, career as a UI designer. 
but then I also wanted to start up. That's when Bookpad happened. Uh, it was way back in 2011, December, I clearly remember that I had a set of ideas that I want to work on. Started talking to a lot of people, ended up talking to 25 developers, trying to figure out who can work with me. There's one guy who said, like, you know, I like one of, the, one of your ideas. And that was eventually, which turned out to be Bookpad. So at Bookpad, what we built was a document preview technology for the cloud. What that essentially, essentially means is that uh, whatever we built can open, view, uh, edit documents like Word, PowerPoint, PDF, Excel, and a lot of other formats on the cloud. Uh, so with that, uh, we started uh, reaching out to a lot of customers. Our customers are typically, for example, I can give an example of Dropbox. So Dropbox has a lot of files stored on it. On it. And let's say you are a user of Dropbox. You have your Word document on it. You want to see what's inside the Word document. I'm talking like three years back. You can't do it. You have to download the document and then open it, then view it. So what we essentially did was we went to Dropbox and said, why, you know, hey, why not use us, integrate into Dropbox, uh, and your millions of users can now do much more with documents stored on Dropbox. So we essentially are an enterprise uh, software which we license uh, to companies. So that, that's, our, that's what we built. It's a, it's a very tech intensive uh, product. And uh, last year, uh, September, around that time, we got acquired by Yahoo. Currently, uh, we have integrated into Yahoo. Just two weeks back, we've launched uh, uh, the document preview feature in Yahoo Mail. So this is how it looks like. Uh, you click on any, so let's say you get an email with, let's say any of the attachment, like PDF or a Word. You click on that, you quickly see a preview of the document right beside your email. It's essentially very similar to a, a Gmail experience, but uh, what we've tried to do is like a much faster uh, experience and a better UI. Here you can uh, see your document and work on your email. You can click reply all, copy paste contents of the document into your compose message and send it. And let's say you want to expand the view. Yeah, here you go. And still you're in the email. You can still get a context of your email. Like, you know, if you hover on the back to message, you can see what, what was the email that was sent. So this was launched two weeks back. So that completes our, uh, you know, in terms of what we started as a company, built the product, sold to Yahoo, integrated into Yahoo Mail, <coughs> launched it. Uh, very happy moment for all of us uh, in the startup. Thank you. Um, so that's what we do, essentially. And right now, currently, I'm working as a product manager in Yahoo, uh, handling this very experience. Um, so let's go back to the question, how important is design for business? Uh, the numbers say it's very important. Because 27 startups co-founded by designers are acquired by big companies in the last five years. And these companies are really big, like, you know, I'm talking about Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Adobe, Yahoo. Uh, and 27 startups is a huge number. If you see all these companies put together, might acquire around 40 at the maximum, if the, if the, if the, if the need is really high, 40 startups every year. So that number would amount to almost like 10, 10 to 15 percent of of all the startups getting acquired, actually more than that, are startups by design founders. So that's a pretty good number. And uh, next is six venture capital firms. These are really big names. Um, you know, name it Axel, Sequoias, and they have offered designers uh, to join their teams as investors. This is huge. I mean, previously, like you know, ten years back, you would see a management, an MBA grad, getting into um, venture capital firms and investing. And here, like designers are asked to step into those roles. Um, what are the other numbers? So this is very recent that you know the numbers show that you know the designer to uh, engineer ratio in startups have significantly improved. It is one is to four or one is to five these days. Previously, it used to be one is to thirty. 
what this number says is that designers are the first hires uh, in startups these days. I mean, the core team. If not the co-founder, the core team. The first one, two hires that happen in a startup are designers. Whereas previously, 30 members are already there. Finally, they realize, OK, we are, we are, we are at a certain stage. We need a, we need a designer to fix everything. Let's hire a designer now. So there's a fundamental shift in the mindset, and which is very great. And I experienced this myself. Uh, when we started up, the second hire we did was a designer. So it's great. We, we exactly had a 1 is 2, 4 ratio at Bookpad. And the other uh, stat is that you know, five of the top uh, funded startups, like you know, these are what I'm talking about, like you know, billion dollar valuations, in the last three years um, are by you know startups by design co-founders. And these startups are, are primarily like you know Airbnb, Fab.com, MediaWise, Linda. So again, a very good, great stat, which shows that uh, startups by design co-founders are reaching that huge scale. So everything is great. So it's a these stats are nothing but they tell that you know designers uh, have a good impact uh, in terms of startups and business. So uh, the sweet spot, as I was talking about in the panel discussion, is if you are building a tech product, uh, you as a co-founder needs to be in that sweet spot of knowing about design, knowing about technology, knowing about business. And being a designer, I think I genuinely feel that you guys already have one, uh, two thirds of the knowledge. Right? I mean, if you're working somewhere, you already have the experience of working with developers, understanding the technology, because you're designing, you know the limitations, you understand the technology in and out, even though you don't code. So you already have two thirds of the knowledge. You just need to you know, venture out and, and get the business knowledge out there. Same happened with me. I mean, after working for two years, I had a very good understanding of technology, how the front and back and all of those things work. I could sit with the developer and talk to him in his language. Uh, design. I was confident I could pull it off. So I had both of these, and I ventured out, and I gained the business knowledge. So that sweet spot is very important. And if you see the other two, somebody is in tech, it's really hard for them to get an understanding of design or business. Somebody is in business, it's really hard for them to understand both design and tech. You guys have a very you know, niche uh, skill set there. So that's the sweet spot. Uh, last bit of uh, thoughts on for designers wanting to start up or work for it. So first and foremost thing that you need to understand is startups are very chaotic. Even though how much our being a designer we love process and a certain methodology, startups are very chaotic in nature. So somehow you need to figure out that you know process that works for you. I've seen a lot of designers working for startups or who started up getting really frustrated that, hey, I spent a week working on this. You asked me to all chuck it and work on something else. That's crazy. But then that's how it is. Uh, strategies change on like as fast as a day, in a day. So be ready for it. Try to align your expectations in that sense. And more important than ever, uh, make everyone in your team understand the, the process that you're following and why you're doing it. Uh, what will this help? What will this, what will this help is that uh, it'll it'll kind of uh, help grow a, a design culture in the startup right from an early stage. It is one of your responsibilities for sure. Otherwise, later as the team grows, uh, it'll be hard to explain why you're doing why uh, you know the, the the reason why you're doing it is hey this is why it, it is. So if, if you, right from the beginning, if you instill this, you, you start telling why you're doing, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, everybody, uh, after a period of time, you don't even have to do it. Everybody already understands, okay, if he's saying this, okay, you must have thought about that. Makes your life really easy. Third would be that understand the business and accommodate it. So most of the times, we as a, uh, as a designer forget the business aspect of it, of why you're doing a product. If you're, even if you're working in a company. Uh, in most of the programs, college programs, 
you really focus just on the product and not worry about the business side of it. But when you are working in a company or if you're working in a startup or you're just first starting, please accommodate business uh, in your goals, in, in everything that you do. Uh, because eventually it's two sides of the same coin. And for entrepreneurs trying to work with designers, I don't know how many entrepreneurs are there here uh, who are not designers, but if you're trying to work with designers, like have confidence and let the designer help drive the product decisions. I think this is very important because uh, it'll eventually uh, turn into a process. So you don't have to, you're not cha chaotically doing random stuff. Uh, then for entrepreneurs, it's very important to work with the designer and build a process inside your company. What this means is that let's say for bigger companies, let's say you have uh, the product cycles are much longer. For startups, the product cycles are much shorter. So you might have to be super agile. I mean, I mean, like in two days you would uh, get user feedback and again iterate on the design on the third day. So you might have to build a custom process right inside your startup. And uh, for entrepreneurs, again, a designer has to be a first hire. It should be a first great citizen in the, in the startup, not, not when you, know, you grow the whole company and then you realize, hey, uh, my product looks, my product works really bad, and then you hire a designer to fix things. So with that, I uh, would want to conclude my talk. Uh, thanks a lot for you know being patient. Uh, if I have time, I can take a few questions. Um,